Hello, I'm Atuba Judge and I'm so excited and blessed and honored, praise God, to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, are you ready to receive your daily break? Listen, not just in words, physical ministration, <laughs> praise God, yeah. I mean, receive, receiving your bread in canal things. That's what I'm talking about, praise God. Yeah, it starts from the spirit, but the manifestation of canal things coming to you. Are you ready? Are you ready to receive money today? <laughs> are, are you ready to receive supernatural favor today? That will bring forth physical things to you. Join me right now as we declare, say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. And Father, we thank you. I declare burdens are being lifted right now. Yokes are being destroyed even as we go into your truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now today is Friday. I told you what to do on Fridays. Hey, spend the whole weekend. Listen, get all the messages from the very first. Listen, 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 listen. I know we share them in bits, you know, because of time. And so you can download them easily. And, and, and that's why we don't preach this whole thing at once. So download them easily. Now listen and listen. You take the time to listen to them at once. And the Spirit of God will open your understanding. Praise God. Yep, so... I was sharing with you yesterday how that Jesus, the time for him to fulfill his ministry came. So there was this challenge of believing or, or, or waiting to see is man capable of receiving eternal life? Is he capable of doing it? What does that mean? Is man capable of obeying God to the fullest? So, man is there. God has ordained him for life, but he cannot receive life because he's under the bondage of the devil and sin. So, the wisdom of God was put to bear. Jesus, whose ministry it was to give man life, took up that challenge. Now, let me tell you something. Jesus could have still fulfilled his ministry without being born. You see, just like the Bible made reference to Melchizedek. Melchizedek showed up on earth and he taught Abraham concerning tithes and he taught Abraham how God wants to bless the whole families of the earth. And he showed Abraham how. Now, he fulfilled that ministry and left. Several times in scriptures, the, the Bible talk about God visiting man. You know, Abraham one time was in the front of his house. God showed up with two angels and they sat down with Abraham. They ate, they, they gisted, they talked when he was going to destroy Sodom. You know the story. That was God that showed up. Now, understand this. At first, he showed up as Melchizedek, as a priest of God. And he left. You don't find him anywhere. You can't find his address. He's gone. He's gone. And then he shows up again as a passerby. Now, in all these cases, it was the words coming out of the mouth that revealed who he was. So Jesus would have fulfilled his ministry by administering life to man. Now, how, do, how was he going to administer life to man the same way he did it? I'm going to show you this now. So, but because man had to prove to God that he can receive, he's capable of receiving life, and two, deal with the sin issue. So Jesus accepted to come as a man. Now that was when the word was made flesh. 
The word was not supposed to dwell among us. The word could have just come in flesh as a man. That's why I showed it has happened before. It's not a new thing. And leave. Finish his ministry and leave. But he came in, planted as a seed into a woman's womb. She gave birth to him. He grew up as a man. He was limited by everything that can limit man. Yeah, he was. And he had to be taught by the Spirit of God how to live like a man. And then he kept on obeying and obeying and obeying and obeying and obeying. Now, the more he obeyed, the more access was given to him. The more he obeyed, the more access was given to him. Wow. You see, he was showing to the Lord that it is possible for man to obey him. The life of Jesus on earth for those 33 years was for that purpose. To show, you see, he was our intercessor. Now, he was interceding for us by living a life. So Satan was, he was moved, he was led up by the spirit to be tempted by the, by the devil. Yeah, that was arranged. Let, let's see how man can respond to the devil. The same way man responded. See, you see, Adam and Eve meeting that serpent was not a chance thing. God knew the serpent was there. God knew the serpent was going to visit them. But he wanted to see how Adam and Eve would respond to the serpent. So you find Jesus being led up in the wilderness, into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Oh, if you are the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. And heaven was watching. Let's see what's going to do. Will he allow hunger to lead him? No. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Oh, wow. Okay. He was hungry. He was hungry. Oh, um, you know what? This guy. Since you're saying it is written, let's do the next one. Took him to the pinnacle. Hey, you know, you can jump down. Remember, it is written. He has given his angels charge. So angels will catch you. Oh, no, it's written. Don't tempt God. Huh? Why do you think he's tempting God? Jump, angels will catch you. You're, don't you know who you are? You're the son of God. So angels will not allow you to die. No, you're not going to do it by your word. All right, all right, all right, all right. The greatest desire of any man is to become king, ruling everybody in the world, right? All right, listen. If you will bow down to me, and he was speaking on knowledge, I will cause you to reign over all the kingdoms of this world. You become an emperor, ruling over the world. That should entice you, man. <laughs> And Jesus said, nah, I will only do what God commands me to do. So I'm not going to take that offer from you one second. Oh, wow. Remember after that experience, the Bible said he came in the power of the spirits. God had tested him and said, whoa, release more measure on him. And, and God was looking at Jesus can, now he wasn't seeing Allah, bro. He wasn't seeing this is me. He was seeing a man. Everything Jesus did on earth moved God. And then he thought to himself, like, now you have shown me, Alabaya. You've shown me that man. This is the man I created. Yes, this is him. Wow, so man can truly obey me? Yeah. All right, so let's deal with the same problem. Would you sacrifice yourself to save man's kind? So I take your debt for every man's debt. And say, yeah, I'm willing to do it. It's all part of the obedience. Telling you that man can go at any length to obey. Because that's the deal. The power of defeating the enemy at any time is in obedience. It's not in how much you've prayed. It's not in how much you've fasted. It's how much you're willing to obey. And, and let me tell you this truth. 
Satan leaves you alone when he realizes that you, your actions or your decisions are will simply be in obedience to, command, to the command of God. He, leaves you, he knows he has lost you. So Jesus was ready. Now, this was the fate of Jesus. I want you to understand this right now. Jesus knew that if he dies and doesn't resurrect, then the ministry that he originally carries will be gone. Man will never get life. So Jesus knew, though he was going to die, he knew the Father will raise him up. The Father will do everything. Now that also is intercession, if you know what intercession is. So this man was risking his life, yet he knew that he had every reason to live. He knew that he cannot die. See, if you've never gotten to the place of intercession where you substitute yourself for the person you're interceding for, you've not gotten there yet. You've not known the depth of intercession. Where you pray and say, Father, instead of this man to die, take my life. Now, there are people who say those things carelessly. And truly, another person will live, they will die. But you say that when you know that you, you, you know the purpose that God has called you to accomplish. You know it. So you're looking at all those things and say, Lord, if you will not let this man live, then take my life. Knowing that there is no way God can take you. He knows there is no way, there is no way because he's shown you your future. That's what Abraham did. With Isaac, he knew, he saw the vision of Isaac. He saw Isaac's future. He saw God have said in Isaac shall your seed be. He saw all these things. And then God says, will you sacrifice him for me? If I sacrifice him, what happens to all my seed? What happens to all the words that you have said? Oh... God who's saying this thing is able to raise the dead. I see, I see, I see. All right, I will, I will sacrifice him. You want him to, you want me to sacrifice him? You want me to sacrifice him? I'll do it. Because you raise him up, praise God. That was the faith, the faith. What pleased God was not the taking Isaac to, the, to, the, to, to, to sacrifice him. What pleased God was what was going through Abraham, Abraham's mind. The same thing that was going through Jesus' mind. This one thing I have received from my father. He gave me the power to lay down my life. He gave me the power to take it up again. Before Jesus went to that cross, he had seen himself rise from the dead. He knew it. He knew it. So he, God looked at him. So what, what, what kind of thing is this? This man is going to have his life I mean taken away from him yet he's believing that i will raise him up oh, what is that what the depth what 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 depth of faith do you know what it is for your life to be taken away it's finished it's gone but you see that happening yet you believe not in the sweet by and by you believe right now the father will raise you from the dead oh god said wow Wow. And guess what? Now, Jesus as a man, there was no way he could give man life. Though that was his ministry. He can only give man life after he gets into his real self. So that's why he told the disciples, it is better for you that I go. Because if I don't go, the Holy Spirit will not come. If the Holy Spirit doesn't come, you cannot receive life. I can't give you life as I am right now. I can't. So he says, I will come back to you. That's why he told him, he said, I will come back. So he prayed that prayer in John chapter 17. Give me that glory that I have with you because I've finished my work. I'm done. I've obeyed you to the end. 
I'm done. So can you give me that life, that glory that I had with you from the beginning? Can you see that? No. From the beginning. Can we go back to that glory? So when Jesus died, and the Father raised him from the dead. Hear me. He did not raise him from the dead as the one who died. He raised him from the dead with the glory that he had from the beginning. So this is that the Jesus that rose from the dead. This is that Jesus that would have come from the foundation of the world. Who carries it with him? the book of life from the foundation of the world. And his responsibility is to now, having made man free from sin, having shown to God that man can live in obedience. Brothers and sisters, do you know what that means? He's saying to the, forget every silly thing man has done. Forget every silly thing man can do. Man can believe you. He was God's example. Now, He's made that level and access open for every one of us, brothers and sisters. Ah, our time is up. But you know what? We're not done with this. We're going to continue next week, I'm telling you. What, what good time to share this thing? Like the time when we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Oh, Father, we honor you. Jesus, you're making your name and yourself known on the earth. Thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Have the best weekend ever celebrating Jesus. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.